Um, we and people before Profit want to respond uh, to a demand that was raised here yesterday by some deputies for a reasonable and respectful debate around refugees. Now, it's not the first time we heard that raised from, from those deputies, um, but we want to respond to it in the way that will give clarity on some of the misinformation that's coming forward, but also to say uh, that if you think, if the deputies think they're being silenced for wanting real and respectful debate, then they need to check their facts and move very sharply away from the hateful and dangerous lies that are being bandied about by elements who have different interests in, uh, in blaming refugees. And I would say to them, rather than punching down, at those who may be perceived to be below us because they come here looking for refuge and help and support, you should kick up and look at what the government have brought us to in terms of homelessness, health crisis, lack of childcare, uh, workers moving away from education because they can't live in their towns and cities. It is the government who are to blame and not the refugees. The argument around re refugees in the social media and published online with some of those TDs featuring in them is absolutely hateful. And it's bizarre to me, really bizarre to me, that those who hold, profess to hold Christian values most, um, most preciously in this chamber are the ones who are now sending out a season's greeting that says there is no room at the inn. Christian values should know that they come from the flight of the family from Egypt, knocking on doors and being pushed away, and Christian values at this time are hugely important. And away from the respectful debate, and away from the racist stereotypes of men of military age, single men of military age coming to this country, we need to be careful not to repeat far-right arguments in an attempt to deflect from the real social causes and economic problems that we have, which are the responsibility of the people opposite me. And when you strip away th those who have come from Ukraine, most of the refugees are coming from Georgia, Algeria, Somalia and Zimbabwe. Most of those societies have been massively impacted by the war in Russia, in particular Georgia. A million men left Russia during the conscription for the Ukraine war and most of them ended up in Georgia. Georgia is in the eye of a massive geopolitical storm and is meant to be next in line for attack by Russia. Syria remains the scene of historic and massive human suffering. Afghanistan and Africa are wrecked by the interference of imperial powers, climate change and social collapse. And a cursory look at the history of Algeria or any of the states that they're, they're deemed to be safe states that they're coming from will show how false and dangerous this narrative is. It, this narrative is because if you bother to look at what's happening across Africa, across Afghanistan, across Algeria, you will see how gay communities, women and anybody who is different is being attacked you, and Deputy. forced out. Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Smith, for, for raising this issue. And it is important that we facilitate open debate. People in this House and members of the public are entitled uh, to raise concerns, are entitled to undertake legitimate protest, and are absolutely entitled to hold uh, this government to account uh, in every way that they possibly can. Uh, that said, we as a government have international obligations which we absolutely will fulfil. And I think the response of the Irish people to the humanitarian crisis in relation to the terrible, terrible war in Ukraine and also those coming here seeking international protection um, has been second to none. And I think we would expect uh, nothing less from the Irish people. Um, that is not to say that it has been easy. Uh, it has not been easy and it will continue to present real challenges uh, for the public service, for the government and for communities all over the country whom we ask to take in uh, groups of people whom they do not know uh, and inevitably that will be exploited by people uh, who hold certain views. Uh, there's no question about that. But it is important, I think, to put it all uh, in context. Uh, the number of people that have come to Ireland uh, in recent months uh, is beyond parallel. Uh, we have provided a safe haven to more than 67,000 people fleeing a brutal war. And that is the context for all of those people. And I'll come to the IP uh, process in a moment. But these people are fleeing war 
uh, they are in fear of losing their life, are worried about their family members and about their communities, and we have an obligation uh, to protect them. Uh, we na may not be able to provide accommodation and support of a standard that in ideal circumstances uh, we would like to do, but we will make sure that their basic needs are met. And I want to commend Minister Rodrigo Gorman and his officials uh, and those in uh, IPAS for providing uh, services and providing accommodation to people who are coming here from Ukraine. Uh, they've provided accommodation for almost 50,000 people uh, who have arrived from Ukraine. Uh, in addition to that, from the beginning of this year to date, almost 14,000 people have arrived in Ireland uh, seeking protection, so seeking international protection. The average number of people seeking protection in the years 2017 to 19 was about 3,500. So by the end of the year, it will be clear that it has increased fourfold in terms of the number of people who have come here across this year relative to what you might call a normal year. But I'm not sure we'll see normal years again. That is the reality. You spoke about the geopolitical uh, developments all over the world, and they're not going to end anytime soon, uh, whether it be war, famine, the impact of climate change. We have to develop a system and develop a capacity uh, to respond uh, to people who come here. Uh, we have a process. Uh, people who come here uh, claiming international protection will go through that process. And it's important that every case is dealt with on its own individual merits and in line with our international obligations, uh, and that's what we will do. So between people who have fled the war uh, in Ukraine and people who have come here seeking international protection, uh, we are providing accommodation as a state for almost 68,000 people uh, at this point in time. And it has presented real challenges. You, uh, and the government will uh, work uh, collectively to address those challenges in the best way that we can. Uh, we had a very good Cabinet Committee, committee meeting earlier this week uh, where we heard, for example, of the plans to ro roll out uh, a new community support fund uh, to assist and invest in communities uh, okay. that have Thank opened the up their arms up. and, in many cases, opened up their hearts and their homes uh, to people coming here uh, to Ireland uh, for safety, security and for a better future. Deputy Smith. I put this question that would give the government an opportunity to praise themselves, but I want to say this to you, Minister. You need to think twice about the sort of praise you're heaping on yourselves. Before any refugee crisis happened here, we had a crisis in our health service, in our education system, in our childcare service, and in particular with our housing. And when other people who live here look around them and blame the refugees because they can and fail to look up and blame you, we have a problem. And it is you who are to blame. There was a woman who stood up at a public meeting in Ballyfermot and said to the people who had attacked refugees or give, given out about them, I'm 15 years on the housing list and no refugee is to blame for that. That is the fault of the government. There are 160,000 vacant homes in this country and you've made no move to refurbish them, to claim them, to open them. So if people who are homeless or sick complain about refugees, it is a problem that you have to answer to. The problem I have with what the deputies argue is that they feed into a racist, ugly narrative that is about in our society. So I'm calling on communities coming up to Christmas, open your arms to these people, make sure that you make you, them Deputy feel welcome, don't blame them, and learn the facts about what's happening on the planet, and at the same time the facts about what this government have yeah, done to this now. society up, and continue to do in the third richest country on the planet. Here, here. Minister McGrath. Three minutes that you had were not really directed at the government as I heard it. Yeah. Uh, they were directed at others in this house and perhaps people outside of this house. So I was absolutely entitled to set out from the government's perspective uh, what we are doing uh, to deal with what is what is a very challenging situation. And we have to be fair and open and honest about that. Uh, and I will always vindicate and stand behind the rights of others to raise questions and to have legitimate debate. Um, but it was important to put that uh, in context and in the context of what the government is doing. It certainly wasn't self-praise in any respect. But Ireland is a good country. Ireland is a place where people want to come to live uh, and to work and to rear a family. And that's borne out by all of the evidence, uh, even apart from the flow of uh, Ukrainian refugees and people seeking international protection. All of the evidence points to Ireland being regarded as an attractive country where people see a bright future and they see opportunity. And of course, that places more pressure on our health system, uh, on the housing crisis that we face, and on the delivery of public services. Thank but you, this Minister. government will continue uh, to do the very, very best that we can to meet those obligations. And I want to pay 
tribute to the 4,500 people who are now in receipt of the accommodation recognition payment in respect of almost 10,000 Ukrainian uh, persons who have come here uh, seeking refuge and seeking support. And I want to pay tribute to them and pay tribute to the Irish people. Thank you.